Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Easton and to part four of building this shop. Um, I've had loads of loads of brilliant comments um, regarding just the nature of this shop really. Um, lots of memories floating around like um, being sent to the shop to buy a packet of 10 players and half ounce of gold of Virginia um, like I did uh, a few times but uh, that is not allowed these days um, yeah and if there's any uh, 5 or 6p left over I used to spend it on sweets and I used to share them with my uh, brothers and sisters but yeah good old days Right, so here we are, we're at the bench, and I'm going with this figure here. Um, she's out the farming set. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to place her next to the sink in the, in the kitchen there. And hopefully we might be able to see her just through the window. And another thing figure or I want to add is this tiny 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 pussycat which I'm gonna sit on the coal bunker um, I think it was in the comments section so I'll just place that cat on the coal bunker there we go Right, so that's those two little details in. I don't know if you can make that out, but we have the cat on the coal bunker and the young lady just about to empty that bucket down the sink. Maybe she just finished cleaning the floor after a hard day shift. Right, so getting back to the straws. The four mil straws, I bought these first thinking I could use these to put sweets in. But four mil is too big, I think. But they're not going to go to waste because there's lots of things you can do with these straws. The three mil straws, what am I going to make with them? Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to make with these. I'm going to make some sweet jars and then I'm going to fill them with sweets. You're probably wondering, three millimeter diameter straws you're not going to get much in there let's just see so firstly I need to mark the straw in six mil intervals so I'm just marking the straw once you have added your lines uh, six mil apart then you just case of putting a little bit of paint on no more than about three millimeters in length. These are becoming the labels on the jars. So now we'll just let these labels dry. I had a comment from Brian from Angels. Um, can't remember the full name of his layout. And he mentioned about the bubblegum machines that used to be outside the shops. And from memory, they used to always be chained up or tied down, and you couldn't run away with the machines. They used to have wheels on them at the back, so I'm going to try and make one of these. Um, so I've had a little bit of a fiddle already. I'm trying to create the handle, and. Uh, so you'll have to bear with me on this one. So I'll just squash the cable together and then bend it back on itself. I'm just making this up as I go all along. Um, I haven't got no sizes as of yet. And I remember that it used to be bent round and then come back down on itself. So if I just run that round there. And I may just have to do the final solder 
around the front. Um, it's all a bit fiddly this, as you can see. So we'll just uh, do the same with the other side. Get them parallel the same. Fold that up just about there. Squish them together. And twist them around. You'll have to bear with me on this. Trying to keep it in the camera as best I can. And then we'll bend that round again the same way. Using that one that's already bent as a guide. And form the you get my drift what I'm trying to achieve here. Something like that. So what I'll do is to make it a little bit easier for myself, I'll trim that. And I've got the basic shape here. So what I'll do then is bend them in towards each other. Hopefully solder them two bits together so now that that is soldered it's so easy now to manipulate the copper wire into shape and uh, with the result of it I can get some half decent measurements of this framework that's gonna set the bubblegum machine on so that from there to there. And uh, I've redrawn it again and added some sizes on it to give you an idea of roughly the height, width and, uh, and all the dimensions that you might need. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a 3mm diameter straw instead of a 4mm diameter straw and just glue it to this piece of plastic there and then we'll cut the plastic off where I've pre-marked it so I'll just square that edge up a little bit and we'll see if we can get a good glue contact on there so as you can see I've stuck a 10mm length of straw onto this piece of round plastic. Hopefully it will stick. Um, I've used a little bit of super glue on there. Uh, so as you can see uh, I have now glued the bubble gum machine onto the stand. And uh, what I've had to do, I've had to revert to 4mm straw to get it to fit over the top of this little bit of plastic that I've uh, found in my common handy box. The reason being is the glue would not take edge to edge on this plastic. Um, but because we've got a little bit of a joint there, it seems to be holding. So all I've got to do now is make a lid to go on the top and then uh, and then it's ready but what I will do first before I do any more is I shall fill it up with bubble gums so what I'm actually doing is using <laughs> sweets <laughs> I'm actually using hundreds and thousands to fill up this bubble gum machine I'm just hoping that the super glue inside has uh, gone off and it doesn't affect the die as well. There you go. So now I can make a lid for that and then seal it.
Yeah, so this is just a scale test and it looks about right. Uh, the wheels are not on the back yet. I think that will give it a bit more balance because um, off camera, the amount of times that thing had fell over with the bubble gums running out, it was just driving me loopy. But uh, I managed to get it there in the end. So all I've got to do now is fit the wheels and then paint it. Well, as you can see, I've added some wheels and I've, you've seen me use these before. They're off the third rail. They're, they're washers. So, uh, so that's what I've done. I've stuck one on either side. So I'm waiting for the super glue to go off. So while I'm waiting for that, I have made a start on. I just zoom you in. Filling up the sweetie jars the same way as I did with the um, bubblegum machine. Made a start on the sweet jars on the window ledge there. And if I flip it round you can see them through the main shop window. So what I have to do is glue them on one at a time and fill them up one at a time and then cap them off with some Yoohoo glue one at a time and uh, it is a little bit of a fiddly job because I'm having to pick up each and every one of these hundreds and thousands one at a time and then drop them into the sweet jar and I'm picking out the smallest ones here and dropping them in just to make sure that looks like there's lots in there. It's a little fiddly job. But I think the end result will prove dividends. And once you've loaded them up, the next thing is to drop a little tiny bit of Yoohoo glue. And that then should cap them. It is a bit stringy this stuff, so I... that's it. There you go. See what it looks like when we're finished. Because I've got so many straws left over, um, I've decided to make some loads for my wagons. And um, what I've done here is, as you can see, I've super glued a few together to make the load, and I've wrapped them round with a piece of 1.5 mil piece of paper so it just wraps them around so it looks like they've been strapped down now normally um, piping like this it's roughly about six meters long um, so I've had to trim these down to scale size uh, with them being four mil that, that's a foot in diameter so they're quite big hefty tubes so once this is done all I've got to do then is just paint them and I've just got one more strip of paper to add around the pipes and then uh, it's ready for painting and that finishes off the load for the wagon just by using them straws and it's a lot cheaper than buying the plastic strip a lot lot cheaper you can get a hundred straws for about five quid or something you can do a lot of loads with that and uh, yeah and yeah it does work out cheaper so I mentioned the length of the tubes earlier roughly about six meters which roughly works out at 72 to 74 if you want to be dead accurate it'd be 74 but uh, I've cut these to 72 right so that's that. Now we can get back on with the shop. I have now glued the front onto the main building now. And um, it looks looks pretty good with all those jars of sweets in the windows. Now then, we still have a little bit of a gap on the shop floor. So I've decided to make a Coca-Cola machine 
and um, what I'm using is the old three pin plug covers so what I've done is I've chopped the top off and I have cut it in half again because what I'm after is is this nice round dome shape on the top and I think once that is glued to my little piece of card here that would give the impression of a coke machine obviously I've got to fill it out and pack it out and uh, I've got a little sketch here of what it may look like so let's just see how I get on so as you can see I have um, super glued the pieces that I've cut off onto this piece of card the dome, dome bit goes to the top and on the bottom I've just left it flat so that becomes the foot or the base and, uh, as you can see it's regained and it's kept its shape so the next thing to do is to fit in a piece of glass for the slot there so you can actually see the coke cans um, if you go on the internet and google 1950s coca-cola machines you'll see the one I'm actually making where it's red here and white on the top and it has obviously the swirly line to represent the coke logo so the next bit to do is to fit a little tiny piece of glass in there and then put a piece of 2 mil card in the back just to um, keep it shaped because it's starting to curve in so I've cut a piece of clear plastic I'm just going to roll it around this 6 mil drill bit and hopefully I will get the shape so it just sits in there We'll see what happens. It's not going to be easy, this. Rolled it, but it's quite stiff, this stuff. I've got it started with a drill, but... Right, so I've just got to cut out. Oops. Don't panic, I did find it. It didn't ping too far. So I've managed to cut a piece. So we're just going to try that in there. And hopefully, I won't have to glue it because it's quite a tight fit. I may just be able to just sit in there. And when I put the 2 mil card in there, that'll just push up against it like so so I've cut a piece of card to represent the back and what I've done is I've painted it red and I've put some silver dots on it so it looks like you may be able to see the bottles or the cans of coke inside that little tiny window so I'm just going to glue this in now and then we shall have a look So I'll just press it in first. Should be a nice snug fit. Right, it's in now. All right, it's going to be interesting. Let's see how close we can get. I don't know if you can see the dots inside there yeah you can't just about close and get before it starts blurring out on me right so as you can see I've added some dots on a added uh, an opening there we can re take your cans of pop out so the next thing to do is to paint the 
top bit white and add the white swirl either side so we shall see this when it's finished As you can see I have now glued the bubblegum machine to the front of the shop now it looks like it's in the air but what I've done there is is I've put a piece of one mil card underneath it just in case I ever decide to put any paving slabs down and then that will just sit on top of the paving slabs so let's just see if we can get you really close up on the ball gun machine so you can see the wheels there you can see the handle the only thing I haven't added is a chain to strap it to the shop itself And here is the Coca-Cola machine, or vending machine. So we'll just let that dry now, and once that's dry, we can glue that into the shop. And then we can start the roof, for definite this time. As you can see, I've glued the Coca-Cola vending machine into the shop now so that's in so the next thing is is to fit the roof and I've made a little bit of a start on it already now I suppose you're wondering I'm going to get the cables in so you remember that little hole that drilled in the corner uh, in the last video and all I've done is I put a piece of card folded it at two right angles and then glued it in situ so the cables will come up through this little groove here and then they will go through that little hole there and onto the two LEDs one this side and one that side so it's uh, one of the tightest spaces I think I've ever worked in to try and get an LED into and now we have lights you can see virtually everything in the shop now, all the sweets the customer the coca-cola machine the till counter Mrs. T and the little kitty but on the back it's a little bit of a different story because the windows are a little bit smaller but you can see in there you can see the odd bits right time to tile the roof so the first thing we need to do is uh, brick up the chimney and I've just cut this little piece of brick sheet not the card but the sheet and that should just wrap around there nicely notice I've notched out to go over the card this allows me to take the card round even further um, so when the pitch comes in you can see the bricks rather than just uh, seeing the white card behind so I shall glue this on at last we finally come down to the roof um, I've taken some very careful measurements here. I've measured the width of the building and then added a millimeter and a half, which will allow for any fascias um, which will go on after the roof has been put on. Um, I've also measured um, for the center of the roof and allowed the cutout here for the chimney breast, and then that will then just slide over the top. So what I've got to do now is work out in relation from the ends of the walls here to this apex front and back so I can cut that out in here so that when it falls down it falls inside these apexes here and what I'm doing now is I've equaled the roof out either side so it's roughly one and a half mil and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a pencil line here and then a pencil line here and what 
I'll do then is I'll cut away at least two or three of these tiles on the inside of where I've just marked it with a pencil. Now I'm not too worried about the pencil marks because it's all going to be painted and scribed later on. So I'm not too worried about that. So what I'm going to do is just mark it but then cut it square because you want that to come down square at those edges. And then just take out three of the tiles and hopefully that will be enough to allow it to come through. So let's just see what happens. So it kind of works. So what I need to do is to come up a little bit more and then take it back. So it's almost overlapping. We're not quite there yet. So it's just a case of just creeping it back slowly, slowly, slowly until you've got enough so that it sits out over the top of these uh, eaves here. So after a lot of trial and error, just taking it back one tile at a time and just slowly creeping back um, along the tiles in both directions, managed to get it to fit over the first uh, um, section of the roof at the front of the shop and then by copying the pattern that we have here folding it over marking it and cutting it and it almost is identical on the back so if I just pop that in there and flip it round you can see it's almost an identical pattern for the back so I think I'll leave it at that so the next thing to do is describe the tiles in the usual way just by scoring them with a pen and then I can glue this one in place so as you can see I've finished scribing the roof and I've added a couple of um, pieces of card here this is just so I can glue the apex to the roof um, and that just gives us a little bit more area for the glue to take instead of it just running down the roof so that will just go on there nicely so a little bit of glue and we can stick this on now the next thing I want to do after this is the chimney pots I've got a new idea for chimney pots because I've got so many three mil straws left over I'm going to make some chimney pots using the straws so let's just glue this on and then we'll come back to that. So the chimney pots, what I'm going to do is just glue a little bit of a toothpick into the chimney pots here. Um, put a little bit too much glue on there in a minute, so um, I'll just soak away it. Right, so I'll just glue these toothpicks in, so they just stick up about five or six mil, something like that. And then we'll do the same with the other one, just take some of this glue off. Right, so what I'm going to do now, you know we normally wrap these up in paper, don't we? But this time, I'm going to stick a little bit of straw on them. Now the straw is three millimeters in diameter, and uh, three millimeters is about nine inches. So that will just fit nicely over that little glue in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square file and just rough an edge up that way turn the straw 90 degrees and then rough it up that way and what I'll do then is, is I'll get my pen and because it's a tapered pen it'll just push the straw 
out and it will give it an edge I'm hoping like the edge or like we have in the photograph I'll compare it with the photograph in a minute so what we'll do is we'll just cut that down to roughly six millimeters and then we shall glue it to the toothpick Just drop a little bit of super glue in that in a minute when I get the other one on. So we'll do the same with this one. I mean, some of these Victorian chimney pots are quite fancy on the top edges. So six mil again. So I'll drop a little bit of super glue inside them and then when it goes off we can give them a coat of paint. I have now painted the roof, it's still a little bit damp. And I've also added some fascias for the apexes which changes the look of the building. I've done it with the sides as well. That's just um, one mil card. Uh, painted black as you can see and um, yeah it's coming on quite well now um, still one or two jobs left to do the chimney pots need painting um, and there's some drain pipes that need to go on and maybe some advertising signs and it's just a case of um, weathering it up So you know by now when I get to this stage painting the drain pipes and the down pipes you know I'm coming to the end of the build um, as in previous videos I've made these out of solder wire and little tiny bits of plastic card for the brackets I've done it this way on this one just to make the building process a little bit um, easier. Uh, normally I would coil up some very fine brass wire and use that to make the brackets. But uh, There's many different ways of doing these. So that's the last of the downpipes. Well, it's taken a while to complete the mini build series that we started off back in January. And uh, here is the final building, complete. Um, remember early on in the video I said I was trying to create a decorative top to the chimney pots. Well, it hasn't quite worked out the way I expected. Um, here's the photograph. As you can see, it's got like very sharp points on the top. Um, I used the file, uh, the corner of the file, to try and create that. It's kind of worked. If I go over the top, it has kind of sprayed the tops of the chimney pots out. But um, it was an experiment. Right, so I think we should have one last look at all the other buildings. Hold on, Tony! Hold on, Tony! Why, what's the matter? Mrs. T won't be happy if you don't hang the sign up on the shop. Yeah, I suppose I better. There's always one last detail, isn't there? That's right, Mr. Tony. Always one last detail. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Porter. I shall get onto that straight away. Right, now I think I'm finished. I don't think there's any more details I can add to the sweet shop. Right, let's have a look at all these builds together. And here we have all the buildings together. Um, it's hard to think that I started this series of buildings back in January. And the first one was the signal box. Um, Mr. Lever is still waiting for his levers <laughs> to go inside his signal box. Um, that will that will happen. I've already got the kit. I'm just uh, waiting to do that at some point. And the build itself, yeah, um, I'm about ninety percent happy with that. With the way that's turned out. And the next one, the follow-on from that, is the water tower. Um, I think what made that building was the use of the copper rings on the tank. I think that's what sets the building off, I think, uh, the way that that's turned out. The windows could have been slightly larger, but uh, on the whole, I'm about 90% happy with that. Then we come to the Weybridge office, uh, another unusual building. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with the way that that's turned out. Um, I don't think I could have done it any differently, um, to be honest. And then we have Mrs. T's sweet shop. Um, I think, I think this is the best out of the lot. I think, but uh, you guys may. Um, think differently but you can um, say that in the comments so I think that's all from me this week um, thanks for watching and uh, I've enjoyed your comments and your support advice help all the way through this series and um, we're going to be giving buildings a rest for a while while I concentrate on something a bit more interesting but uh, you'll find out more about that next week. So, bye everybody. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. Bye.